Over the last few years of Manchester United post to Alex Ferguson era, we've had a lot of managers. And some of these managers have come at the right time and some of these managers have come at the wrong time. In this very episode, we are going to look at all the managers that Manchester United have had post to Alex Ferguson era. We are going to rank them from A to F and we're going to see who was the best manager that Manchester United had post Sir Alex Ferguson. Now, Manchester United, obviously, um, a lot of people have given up hope that Manchester United could be properly fixed by one manager and would need more and more and more just having a manager, a director of football, a new owner, scouts, everything in between that we need. But for now, let's look at the managers. Let's go. Mm -hmm. What's up everybody, it's the Sports Code AK Aiden and welcome back to another video. This is going to be a Manchester United ranking every single manager post Sir Alex Ferguson era. So of course we all know that Sir Alex Ferguson is the greatest manager to ever um, live in the game of football and probably in the world. So it's important that we need to look at all of the people that have, uh, that have happened beyond um, Sir Alex Ferguson and give an honest an unbiased review on how well they actually did at Manchester United. Now fans can be very, very deceiving to these things. We look and we can interpret one thing, but the actual facts say another. So it's, it's a very good balancing trick to try and get both sides and see where exactly they rank from A to F in the manager um, debate and how well they actually did. So before we get started, man, please like and subscribe to the Sports Code YouTube channel. Turn notifications on, man. Share the video and the playlist. It's been a while since our Manchester United video has properly been out. There's been news, of course, about the Premier League and there's a lot of returns in training, so that's a good thing to see. But of course, that's not what this video is about. Let's go and let's rank every single manager from best to worst, from A to F. First off, um, the the kind of uh, person that was supposed to be the second coming of Sir Alex Ferguson in a way, the, the person that came right after him, David Moyes. I believe um, he was, he came from Everton at the time and um, he was very decent manager at the time for Everton and he was looking to make the next step up at Manchester United of course having a legend leave we needed someone that was willing to take the next step and uh, obviously the faith was there now some fans at that time didn't really want David Moyes didn't trust David Moyes and then the signings that came along with David Moyes like Marouane Fellaini was a very big trouble as well. Not a lot of people were interested in the signings that he made. However, after time, um, there's there was a little bit of faith with David Moyes um, in, in the first few games, but it barely took a season. If not, it was a little bit under a season before they got sacked. Fans were absolutely outraged with how um, poor Manchester United were. And of course, from going to winning a league to where they were, Manchester United were not accustomed to failure like this as we are now. So fans reacted in a very different way than we probably would have if David Moyes was our manager right now. That's just an opinion. You guys can believe what you want. Um, that's just my opinion. If David Moyes was here now and we were still, we, and we were sixth with um, the way the Oli is at the moment or fifth, to be honest, I. I would say we should probably keep him. But at the time, things were different and Manchester United were different. We were expecting to at least compete for the league, compete in the Champions League, and we just weren't at that level anymore. So, David Moyes was obviously um, a very bad representation at the time where in, if, he, if he got hired now, people would probably have a different perception about him. Uh, what did David Moyes win during his time at Manchester United? Well, since he basically came in uh, right after Sir Alex Ferguson, and he got sacked in under a year. It's very hard to say that he won anything because he didn't. David Moyes did not win anything. However, his win percentage is actually the second highest out of all the Manchester United managers that we have had post Sir Alex Ferguson era. Very surprising stat. I believe it was 52.94%. I'll show a picture about that right about now. That's the win percentage that um, David Moyes had as a Manchester United manager. 
Um, the style of football was very slow. It was very stagnant. It wasn't the fast attacking football that Manchester United needed or wanted. And therefore, he suffered for that dramatically. A big suffering, a big loss. And Manchester United fans obviously losing their beloved football for the very first time. Things went south. And... Um, Again, I think he became, I think he still is the most hated manager that Manchester United fans actually have. But a lot of players still think that if he, David Moyes had a little bit more time, he would have been successful. Now, there were many players that he was linked to that we could have got, but unfortunately, he didn't get the time that he needed to make a big difference at Manchester United. Whether that's being for a good reason or a bad reason, nevertheless, that is the reason. He didn't get his time and therefore he couldn't make a big difference, whether it was going in the right direction or not. So in order to rank David Moyes, we have to go based on the facts. The facts is, he won a few, he's the second highest winning percentage in Manchester United history at 52.94%. However, the style of football being lost for the first time, the uh, ability to not win a trophy while he was there, and also the signings and the fans as well, which is a big factor. I think if I had to rank David Moyes, I'd rank him at a D. I think that's the best place. I do not think he's average. I think he was below average, so I can't give him a C. I think D's the fair score because, yes, he was given enough time. I think a lot of people can agree with that now, but... With the time that he did have, he had made terrible signings. He didn't win many games, even though he, again, most Man United managers have not won many games. But it's not just that. It's the way that we played. And again, this is going to be a, a reoccurring factor for pretty much every single um, every single uh, manager. The style of football. That's the most important thing. And we lost that with David Moyes. We didn't, we didn't have that fast attacking play and when we did it was stagnant it wasn't what it used to be and that could be the players but it could also be the managing styles because of course no one is like Sir Alex Ferguson and yeah D for me is where I would put David Moyes uh, unfortunately he just wasn't there he just wasn't he just wasn't the manager that we all expected next Ryan Giggs ah uh, we all know this guy. He's a legend at Manchester United, of course. I think he has the second most goals or the, in, in the pre, in Premier League era for Manchester United. But not only that, he he's been um, he's been there since the very beginning in some sort of way. Whether it's a pundit, a manager, or a player, he's been linked to Manchester United for a long, long time. And we love and we respect Ryan Giggs. And it's very hard to give a grading on Ryan Giggs. One, because during this time, I, I should also mention, I wasn't watching a lot of football back then. I wasn't really into it. But with Ryan Giggs, he was only there for about a month. I think he was there for less than a month. Correct me if I'm wrong. Again, um, I believe he was there from the 22nd of May until the, the 22nd of April until the 19th of May. So under a month. Of course, a, TK, a caretaker manager is a manager that's there to ensure that we have a manager until we go find a new one, which we'll get to later on. And um, what, did, what did he win, Ryan Giggs? Of course, he didn't win anything. He only was there for a month. He did not win any trophy, I believe. Correct, again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he did not win a trophy. And um, it was pretty much coming towards the end of the season. So, yeah, um, that was definitely... That was definitely Ryan Giggs' reign. Many people actually said we should keep Ryan Giggs on. And even to the point where when the, uh, all the other managers past him were getting linked for the sack, we put Ryan Giggs back. But I don't know why. Uh, apparently, the football was a little bit better. But however, the actual percentage of wins and losses was worse. He won exactly 50% of the games that he's played. Um, he's he's managed for Manchester United as a caretaker manager I don't think you can expect anything more or less than that to be honest. It's a caretaker manager If he does well or not, we've seen it with Oli it, it, it might make a difference to his career But at the end of the day he was never linked to the job permanently and I think that's the most important thing here So where can I rank Ryan Giggs as a manager to be honest? There's not enough information to assess Ryan Giggs again only one month So I'm gonna put him in C because again, it's unknown I think he was average at the time because average is all I could give him with the time that he had. He won 50% of his games. And I think a lot of people would put him in D, but we, he, did, we, he didn't have his own transfer window. He didn't have the plays that he wanted to bring in. At the end of the day, he only had a month. And I think the fans were just very happy at the time that David Moyes was getting sacked. So they didn't really have a big problem with Ryan Giggs. 
I think that's the way that, that I saw it, in my personal opinion. And again, all of these are my personal opinions. So I think C is where I'm going to go for Ryan Giggs. And if he got more time, things could have changed. He could have even gone above a C or below to a D or 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 an E or an F. Uh, there's no one going to be an E, by the way. It's either D or F, straight up. So yeah, that's the way that um, that's the way that I see it, man. And until he got, he basically got sacked. He wasn't given a sack. He they found a permanent manager. Man, this manager was Louis Van Gaal. Louis Van Gaal. Now, a lot of people don't have very fond memories of Louis van Gaal, and the main reason why is his football. His football was worse than David Moyes. I think everybody said that at the time. However, um, the win percentage was very, very similar. It was still around 52%. I think it was 52.6% win percentage. So his win percentage was very, very close to um, the likes of David Moyes. And if you look at some of the signings he's made, a lot of the signings were hit and miss for Louis van Gaal. You had the likes of Daley Blind, who was a good player, but you also had the likes of Schneiderlin, who ended up not doing well at Manchester United. Damian, who ended up not doing well at Manchester United. Again, this is a repeated um, theme with the signings. They've not done well. But there is that one player that did phenomenally well with Louis van Gaal, and that was Anthony Martial. Anthony Martial was signed by Louis van Gaal and to the many, many, many critiques from other managers and other clubs, it just worked. Martial worked and his debut worked and Louis van Gaal gave him that opportunity. He's also helped with the likes of Marcus Rashford. Now, yes, Marcus Rashford is probably more of a product of Jose Mourinho than Louis van Gaal. But at the end of the day, if Louis van Gaal didn't give him that start, didn't give him that chance to succeed, where would we be? So Martial, in a way, yes, he's um, he, he's a product of Louis Van Gaal more than Rashford. But at the end of the day, this, this it, it was good, man. This that those signings were good. And yes, I know Rashford's not technically a signing, but given the opportunity, he's basically like a brand new signing. So we've had a lot of hit and misses with Louis Van Gaal. What did he win? He won the FA Cup, and uh, again for the FA Cup. Look, it's not the greatest thing to win. I think we all can agree with that. It is not the greatest thing to win. And Louis van Gaal wasn't in the job for too long because we wanted to win Premier Leagues. We wanted to win trophies. And we wanted to win more than just the FA Cup. A lot of people were stunned. They thought Louis van Gaal was going to stay because we won the FA Cup. But he ends up getting sacked the day after. So... Um, his managerial um, stints with Manchester United was probably the worst in his career, to be honest. And um, for that, I'm going to give him a C. I think it was better than David Moyes, to be honest. Uh, maybe the football is better under David Moyes, but the winning was better with Louis van Gaal. We won a trophy, a very, very good trophy to win. The FA Cup isn't a joke for many, many people, but for some people, it's not considered the best trophy to win. That's understandable. It isn't the best trophy to win. But he won a trophy, and that's... What more can you ask for from a, from a coach who's coming in very short notice as well? I know we, we were linked to him for a while, but he wasn't there for, for as long as as Jose Mourinho per se. And um, yeah, he ended up winning a trophy, so that's great. That's what that's what we wanted at the time. But it was wasn't the only thing that we wanted. We wanted Champions League football, which we didn't get under Louis Van Gaal. We wanted um, success in the Premier League, which we didn't we didn't get under Louis Van Gaal. And um, it showed. So I'm giving him a C. I'm putting him bang average. There's nothing. There was nothing overly too bad besides the football. But of course, the good um, opportunities at, at, for young players and the youth ended up propelling him above David Moyes, in my opinion. And he's definitely um, better than David Moyes as a manager from what I've seen. Now, next up on the list, Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho is more accustomed to the to the football that I was started to watch at Manchester United. I watched the last year of Louis van Gaal and I watched Jose Mourinho throughout his entire period, his entire reign. He was here for three years or two and a half, three seasons. So for Jose Mourinho, what is his win percentage? His win percentage is the highest win percentage for Manchester United um, post Alex Ferguson era at 58%. Um, much, much better win percentage under Jose Mourinho. The first two years of his reign were very, very good, but it started to dwindle down for a lot of people at the end. Um, first, of all, first of all, we'll get to the first season. Now, the signings for 
Manchester United, when this happened, when we first fell into the Europa League, Manchester United went all out. We signed Mkhitaryan, who was a phenomenal player we were linked to at the time, leading Bundesliga in assists at the time. He was perfectly suited for Manchester United. You had the likes of Paul Pogba, who of course is still here and is rumoured to leave. But at the time, probably the world's most exciting and one of the best midfielders at his age to come back home to Manchester United. Zlatan as well. Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He just um, he came, he came here for free um, to join Jose Mourinho and his and his squad. He joined Manchester United and he made a very good impact in his first year. And I believe there was one more, but I for the life of me can't remember who it is. Oh, Eric Bali, Eric Bali, that was the one. And of course, he's still here as well. He's had a very mixed up and down career at Manchester United, and he did very well in his first season. Now I believe he won. Um, since Manchester United won the FA Cup, he won the uh, Community Shield against Leicester City. That's one trophy that he won. He's won the Carabao Cup, which was another trophy that he's won. And he, um, he ended up getting the Europa League win as well in his first season. However, just for all those, win all those um, leagues that we managed to win, all those competitions that we managed to win, we fell down in the league. We were in our worst league position, and I think... Um, since David Moyes and, and Louis van Gaal, we were sixth in the Premier League, which is, of course, not where we wanted to be. Yes, we had success in other leagues, but the Premier League was the biggest downfall. And he said himself that he had to make a sacrifice between the league and the Europa League. He targeted the Europa League, and thankfully, everything worked out, and we won the Europa League. And we did very well through troubling times, very tough competition, um, a lot of teams parking the bus against us, which is funnily enough with Jose. And um, we did well, and we ended up winning the Europa League for Paul Pogba was a big impact player in that game against Ajax. Second season, we did not win anything in the second season. However, we got second. Now people say, this second is the worst second place you could ever get in history because of the amount of points that Man City were at compared to Manchester United. And I agree with that. Second place, uh, according to Jose, is the greatest achievement he's ever had with this squad. And to be honest, again, I agree with that too because the squad was very lacking at Manchester United. There was no depth, really. Playing the same players all the time. We all were crying out for some youth players, but Jose couldn't trust them because he tried to get a league at the end of the day, so he didn't trust that youth. And in the end, it came back to bite him. Now, you have to also look at the management style with Jose Mourinho, which is something that I didn't talk about with the other managers. And the reason why is because Jose is naturally born with a tough mental side and he treats everybody the way that Jose was probably treated and uh, with the strong mental a strong mentality uh, a, a run through brick walls attitude and he only really responded to players like that in the second season we got Lukaku and Lukaku was a great fit for um for Manchester United and for Jose Mourinho's st style at the time and he did phenomenal in his first season. Then in his second, um, he also got Nemanja Matic in this season as, in this uh, season as well and Nemanja Matic, he did his job at the end of the day. He wasn't phenomenally good like he was at Chelsea in his prime but he definitely wasn't below the level where people were saying that he he's, he's, doesn't have it anymore. That's where Nemanja Matic was at this point in time and he did his job fairly well. And we had a decent team to go and attack. But we finished second. And a lot of people questioned his playing style for not winning any trophies at that time. People were saying it's time to, it's time for him to go. The third season not going to work out well. But Manchester United gave him the opportunity for the third season. And in that third season, everybody that predicted it was right. Jose had a hell of a terrible time in his third season. Players coming out and um, dropping uh, downing tools. The, the mentality of the players was gone. He mistreated a lot of players like Anthony Martial, Memphis Depay at the time, which obviously we got as well. I can't remember which. I'm pretty sure Van Gaal signed um, Memphis Depay. And all, all of the other players that, that had a big problem with him and pretty much down tools. And he benched a lot of them. And then I think at the point with Liverpool, where he benched Paul Pogba in a must-win game against Liverpool, was the turning point for Manchester United and for Jose Mourinho. He got sacked in his third year. Now, that's the pretty much the, the, the lifespan of Jose's career. However, was he the best manager that Manchester United have ever had? Post to Alex Ferguson. Where am I going to put Jose Mourinho? I know this is going to shock a lot of people, but I'm going to put Jose Mourinho in the B section. I think Jose Mourinho was an above average manager for Manchester United. I know that might 
tick off, tick off a lot of people, but you have to look. He has the highest winning percentage. He's won more trophies. And at the end of the day, look at the team he had in that second season. Uh, but if, if you take away Lukaku, you take away um, Matic, look at the team we had. We still had Chris Smalling and Phil Jones playing at the centre-back pairing as the starting centre-back pairing. Uh, we just got Lindelof as well, I believe, and they were slowly taking over those two. But at the end of the day, Phil Jones was still at large. David De Gea was still being world-class, but again, we, did, we, played, we were playing Ashley Young at left-back. He was um, good attacking-wise, but defensively, lackluster. Only had a, a fair few games where he was good defensively. We didn't have a very good right-back. We brought in Delore and never used him. And that's, that's where Jose Mourinho ultimately failed, was with his players. He did not treat his players right. But at the end of the day, his work ethic and his mentality pushed a lot of our players to get a strong mentality themselves. And what Jose may have not done in his time at Manchester United, he's put on to the next manager to try and get a better mentality for his players for the next manager. And again, trying to build a future for our next manager, which of course, is our present manager. So, to recap, um, we've put David Moyes in the D section, we've put Ryan Giggs in C, bang average, and we put Jose Mourinho in B. It's time for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, this is a very tough one to um, put into words, really. So, I'm going to divide it into sections. First of all, we need to look at the fans. The fans love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, but do the fans love Ole Gunnar Solskjaer because of his um, his legendary status, or do they love him for his managerial um, techniques? And at the end of the day, it's it's not for the managerial techniques, is it? Not anymore. But we still give him the opportunity and the chance because the signings he's made has been by far the best signings that I have seen from a Manchester United manager, scout. Whatever, whoever goes through the process, we have had the best signings within one year than all of the managers combined bar the Pogba signing. I think that's well and truly um, a fact. You have Aaron Wan-Bissaka coming in at, a, at the age of 20, I believe, and I think he's 21 years old now, and he's instantly become the best defensive right back in the Premier League. We've got Harry Maguire, 80 million, overpriced, I agree. But he's come in and he's made Phil Jones look like he should be playing in a Division 10 league down, uh, with, um, with, down with the people at the pub, you know? That's what he made Phil Jones look like. No disrespect, but at the end of the day, you see the levels. I'm not... You see the levels between Harry Maguire and a Phil Jones. Harry Maguire and um, a Chris Smalling. Even though Chris Smalling's doing phenomenal at the moment. And at the end of the day... That is something that's very, very big on my list. The signings. Dan James, 15 million. Yes, he has, what, four goals and seven assists? Um, he's had stats similar to his Swansea season, and he's doing it at a higher level. So it's only going to get better when he gets more accustomed. He gets a second season and a third season, and he's growing. He's getting physically stronger, mentally stronger. He's able to play at the big time. He's only going to get better. Then, of course, the recent signing of Bruno Fernandes and Odion Nogalo. Now, Odion Nogalo is alone, so I don't want to talk too much about him. But Bruno Fernandes, this was a signing, whether it's Oli's signing or not, it was under Oli's reign, and he's by far been the best signing I think Manchester United have made. And I know it's only been a few months, but at the end of the day, look at the impact he's made within that month, within those two months, and one and a half months, whatever it is, look at the impact he's made. He's made us a better team just by one player. And we look at the players that we've been linked to now. A lot of people don't like the older players. And notice how there are barely any players above the age of 28 that we're going for. And th there isn't much, maybe Gareth Bale, but even Gareth Bale is not being linked as much anymore. And that's a very positive sign. And I think Oli has brought that mentality into the team of bringing young and upcoming players willing to play for Manchester United instead of other players getting a paycheck. Now, what is Oli going to Solskjaer won in the, um, in, in the league, in, in his time as Manchester United? That's the problem. He's not won anything. Even when he was three months in charge, he did not win anything. He had one of the most historic moments in Manchester United history, however, when he beat PSG. And um, it, was, it was just as good as even when Jose beat Juventus at that time. It was much better than that. And he was, it was a phenomenal night on a phenomenal day. 
and where all Manchester United fans were celebrating and saying, sign him now. But since then, he hasn't won a trophy and he hasn't won a lot of fans' hearts. If anything, a lot of fans have turned on him since that time. So, his win percentage, I believe his win percentage is actually lower than all of these guys. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'll show a picture now, just to make sure. And um, at the time, he, he was actually better than Sir Alex Ferguson during those three months. But the months after that, he was very, very poor. For me, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is somewhat inconsistent. I think that is where everybody's at right now. He can have a stretch where he's winning games constantly three, three four months in a row. And then he can have a month, two months, three months, where we win maybe one game per month, two games per month. And we end up falling and falling and falling. And that's why we are where we are in the Premier League at the moment. We're fifth, fighting for fourth. And this has been the worst top four race in recent years, if not Premier League history, with the amount of points that's going to make us get into the top four. So we have to consider the Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as a manager. He's not better than Jose Mourinho. I think that's for sure. I think Jose is a better manager, but he's not. But Ole's more suited as a manager for Manchester United. Many people say Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has not been given a fair chance, and at the moment, with the time that he's had. It looks like we're going, to keep, we're going to keep him another year. I think Oli is going to get his fair chance at Manchester United. But at the moment, I can't put him above Jose Mourinho because Jose has won more trophies with a worse team. So where am I going to put Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? I'm putting him with C. And I know it's disrespectful to put him on the likes with Ryan Giggs as a manager, but of course he's better than Ryan Giggs. Let's be real. Don't Just because they're in the same category doesn't mean that they're the same level. Of course, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's been in the job for longer. He's had more success with signings and everything. So he's clearly had the, the, um, the, the a higher advantage over Ryan Giggs. But no trophies is, is a big downfall. And I think the fan reaction to him is mainly because he's a legend at the club and not because he's a manager. Now, I am more than happy to give a, um, to let people comment down below what you guys think of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, what you think of all these managers, I'm more than happy. And to be honest, if you guys convince me, I'll change my mind. But I think that's the level where I'm at at the moment. I don't think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is at a B to an A level as a manager. And I don't think that David Moyes was average. I, I think this is the perfect place to put all of these managers. I don't think any of them were to an F level where we lost every single game, but I don't think any of them were at A level. Otherwise, we wouldn't be making this video and would be saying that let's keep every, any, that manager who it is. And at the moment, I've not seen one manager that we've had that everybody's on board with keeping. That's just the way I see it. So hopefully you guys agree. Let me know if you disagree. At the end of the day, this is all opinions, all comments. Feel free to speak your voice, man. Let your voice be heard and let other people hear your voice because it's just as important as mine and everybody else's in this world. So I want to thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a wonderful and safe day. Take care and peace.